New Robot Revealed, Weekly Robot News. Hello, viewers. Welcome back to your one-stop shop for all news robotics. We're back once more with the latest, sometimes shocking happenings of the robotic tech world. From San Francisco being covered in robotaxis, Festo introducing a pneumatic cobot arm and chips that mimic the human brain, all the way to how an actuator is transporting objects, a brand new Roomba for rivers, and human and robots working together to build murals. We have it all and more. So, without further ado, let's jump right into our weekly updates. However, before we do, we request you to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss another upload of ours. Having said that, let's get right to it. Highlights of the week. Robotaxis now cover 70% of San Francisco. Cruise recently expanded its Robotaxi services to nearly 70% of San Francisco. The company's service area now includes the Bernal Heights, Bayview, Dogpatch, Excelsior, Height, Knob Hill, No Valley, Japantown, Outer Mission, Potrero Hill, Portola, West Portal, Richmond, Sunset, Pack Heights, and Presidio Heights neighborhoods, among others. We will continue to steadily increase service area, hours of operation, and number of concurrent AVs to reach more users, said Kyle Vogt, co-founder and CEO of Cruise. It's going to be an exciting year. Cruise first began offering public robotaxi rides in San Francisco in October 2021, when the California Department of Motor Vehicles, or DMV, approved the company for fully autonomous rides in California. More recently, in March 2022, Cruise received a driver deployment permit from the California Public Utilities Commission. The driver deployment permit allows Cruise to charge for services as long as there is a human safety driver present in the car. Cruise's permit allows its robotaxis to operate on select public roads in San Francisco from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. Cruise has applied for a driverless deployment permit, which would allow it to charge a fare to passengers using its fully driverless robotaxi service. However, Cruise has not made any public statements about its request for a driverless deployment permit yet. Festo introduces pneumatic cobot arm. Festo announced its pneumatic collaborative robot, or cobot arm, at the Festo Tech Talk 2022. The company plans to make the cobot commercially available in 2023. The cobot uses six pneumatic direct drives, instead of the typical electric motors and mechanical transmission, to move. Each of the six drives consists of a circular chamber with a movable partition. Differences in air pressure on either side of the partition wall in the chamber cause it to shift, which then moves the joint. Festo's pneumatic cobot has many advantages over typical cobots. The high energy density of compressed air means that the cobot can be moved precisely even without complex force torque sensors. The arm is equipped with precise pressure regulators in the joints, meaning the robot knows when it's touched by a human and can respond accordingly, according to Festo's head of robotics, Christian Terragona. The cobot has a 670 mm reach and a 3 kg payload. Its weight is around 17 kg due to its use of die-cast aluminum. Because all of its relevant systems are integrated into the foot section of the robot, it doesn't require an additional control cabinet. Festo's cobot can be programmed similarly to many other cobots on the market. The company's robotic suite software offers the option of programming the arm with an operating device and predefined skills. The robot can also be programmed with hand guiding. Getting the cobot ready for pick and place tasks can take less than an hour, according to the company. Optoelectronic chips mimic the human brain. The human brain, which is made up of some 86 billion neurons connected in a neural network, can perform remarkable feats of computing. Yet, it consumes just a dozen or so watts. How does it do it? Jeffrey Shainline, a physicist at National Institute of Standards and Technology in Boulder, Colorado, and his work may shine some light on this question. Shainline is pursuing an approach to computing that can power advanced forms of artificial intelligence, so-called spiking neural networks, which more closely mimic the way the brain works compared with the kind of artificial neural networks that are widely deployed now. Today, the dominant paradigm uses software running on digital computers to create artificial neural networks that have multiple layers of neurons. These deep artificial neural networks have proved immensely successful, but they require enormous computing resources and energy to run, and those energy requirements are growing quickly. 
In particular, the calculations involved in training deep neural networks are becoming unsustainable. Researchers have long been tantalized by the prospect of creating artificial neural networks that more closely reflect what goes on in networks of biological neurons, where, as one neuron accepts signals from multiple other neurons, it may reach a threshold level of activation that causes it to fire, meaning that it produces an output signal spike that is sent to other neurons, perhaps inducing some of them to fire as well. A few companies have produced chips for implementing electronic spiking neural networks. Shaneline's research focuses on using superconducting optoelectronic elements in such networks. His work has recently advanced from investigating theoretical possibilities to performing hardware experiments. How Actuator Transports Objects Biological actuators can be fantastically complex. Networks of nerves can drive tiny muscles to make coordinated motions in ways that are very difficult for engineered systems to match. You can see how far robotics is from nature when you look at our best attempts to mimic things like snakes or millipedes or even intestines, all of which function based on lots of tiny muscles working together. Usually, the closest that robots can get to nature is by connecting a bunch of chonky discrete actuators together, which sometimes results in similar functionality, but with far less efficiency and elegance. What these biological systems have in common is peristalsis, a series of wave-like coordinated muscle contractions that animals use to move themselves, and that animal insides use to move stuff around. Take just one solitary wave and you've got a soliton, which should probably not be used to propel starships at faster than light speeds. Solitons have been mimicked by robotic systems before, although by, again, relying on a complicated and expensive chain of individual actuators. A recent paper from the Pickle Group at the University of Pennsylvania is exploring a much simpler approach to generating soliton waves, dominoes. Falling dominoes exhibit soliton behavior as they topple in sequence, and you can propagate the wave with a single actuator at the first domino. Using some of those fancy cheating dominoes that are hinged at the bottom allows a second actuator to send the soliton right back again, resetting the system. We wanted to realize a system that would be low power, simple, and could scale to smaller robots, Penn's James Pickle tells media. A Roomba for Rivers Humankind is enamored with water. The beauty and utility of the Earth's oceans, rivers, lakes, and streams explains why 40% of us live within 100 kilometers of the planet's coastlines. But we don't always respect and properly care for the things we love. As with many of our habitats, the world's waterways have become dumping grounds for our trash. Picking up the litter that fouls these otherwise picturesque areas is a full-time job. But few localities have the resources or political will to pay for cleanup costs. That might change now that French robotics company Interactive Autonomous Dynamic Systems has introduced the Jellyfish Bot. The machine, which can run autonomously or at the direction of a remote operator, goes around collecting the junk and gunk, like plastic bottles, oil spills, and algae, that float on the water, as well as detritus located up to 10 meters below the surface. The jellyfish bot is studded with sensors that not only allow it to navigate autonomously, but also measure the quality of the water in terms of salinity, temperature, turbidity, and the proliferation of organisms, including cyanobacteria and phytoplankton. Hooray for robot labor! Robots and humans make murals together. Robots are well known for having consistency and precision that humans tend to lack. Robots are also well known for not being especially creative, depending, we suppose, on your definition of creative. Either way, roboticists have seized an opportunity to match the strengths of humans and robots while plastering over their respective weaknesses. At CHAI 2022, researchers from ETH Zurich presented an interactive robotic plastering system that lets artistic humans use augmented reality to create three-dimensional designs meant to be sprayed in plaster on bare walls by robotic arms. Robotic fabrication is not a new idea, and there are lots of examples of robots building intricate structures, leveraging their penchant for precision and other robot qualities to place components in careful, detailed patterns that yield unique architectures. This algorithmic approach is certainly artistic on its own, but not quite as much as when humans are in the loop. Toss a human into the mix and you'll get stuff like in this video. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.